Hi everyone, you've probably seen me using this shield over here with this Arduino to program this eighty tiny 85 microcontrollers in some of my projects that I do with that microcontroller. If you are regular on the channel, you know that I love these things. They are really small and they can be easily fitted in any projects and they are more than capable to uh, run basically a lot of components and a lot of peripherals. And one of the problems that I have is that this shield was made in a kind of really crude way. Uh, I mean, it works, it does the job, but I wanted to go a step further. Specifically, I want to go a step further in situations where I need to program more than one 80 tiny. So if I want to make a batch of, uh, of a project where I need multiple, then in the current setup, I need to go in and place each of the chips and program it individually and then place it uh, in the finalized project. As is, the shield is functional, it works, but beside being able to just program one chip, one of the major issues that I have with the shield is the socket that's in here. Sometimes it doesn't hold that uh, it doesn't hold the chip nicely, so it can have errors in programming. And also it requires a lot of patience and attention to not bend any of the legs when putting the chip in. So I went ahead and designed a shield that will work with this socket. This is the Zill 28, which is a quick release socket that's used on different programmers. And because it has a lot of positions, then that means that we can also place more than one uh, microcontroller at a time and program them all at the same time. I've partnered with PCBWay to manufacture a custom board for this shield and they are the sponsor of the video. And if you don't know, PCBWay offers custom PCBs, PCB assembly, CNC machining, and 3D printing for really low prices. And they always deliver great quality. I use PCBWay whenever I need PCBs for my project. And this is a perfect example of one such PCB. You can check out the link in the video description if you want to get a $5 coupon and maybe even get your first order for free. At the moment, PCBWay is celebrating their eighth anniversary. So they're running a huge promotion where they're giving away free coupons for manufacturing PCBs. There will be a ton of them. So be sure to go check them out. And not only PCBs, but also they're giving away coupons for their CNC manufacturing and 3D printing. So you can score a lot for your projects. Be sure to give them a visit and check out what they have. And now let's jump back to the project. Let's see what we've got this time. And we have some nice little bonus. Thank you, PCB Way. And here is the shield that I made. Let's go closer. Okay, so let's release the boards. Let's get one. And they really look nicely. So here is the board. You can see that it looks absolutely amazing. And this time I chose the red color, which really pops up. And now let's see if I made the dimensions right. The first thing that I want to check is this socket because I designed that myself. Okay, that fits perfectly on the holes. Uh, the outline is a bit wider than it should, but I think that would not be a problem. And next thing that I want to check if I made the alignment right. Uh, so you can see that there are two headers, one at the top, one at the bottom. The bottom one aligns with the first four pins on the Arduino Uno, which are the reset, the 3.3 volts, the five volts and the ground. 3.3 is not connected. I'm using five volts and ground and also the reset pin to add this capacitor across it. This stabilizes the programmer when working with the 80 tinies. And on the other side, we have pin 13, 12, 11, and 10 coming in to the appropriate pins 
on the microcontroller. You can see the routing that it goes next to the holes and because this is double sided some of the tracks are on the back. So far I'm really pleased on how this whole thing looks and it seems that all of the pins are aligned properly so that was one of my concerns because I was working off the dimensions of the UNO that uh, as stated on one of the reference designs that I found but now let's solder everything up and let's try this uh, this shield to make sure that I do the alignment as it should be I've placed two headers in the correct pins in the Arduino Uno that I'm gonna use. So I'll place the shield on top of them. Uh, and yes, they are correctly aligned. As you can see now, let's start soldering them first. And once we have the headers soldered, we can then jump to the socket Next thing to solder is this quick release socket. The handle is aligned with the notch that's on the top. So pin one should be here on the left. And I'll push the handle so it doesn't come into way. And the whole thing sits nicely. I'll start by first soldering two of the pins. Make sure that everything looks nice and it does and I'll then solder all of the rest of the pins. And now that we have the socket soldered in, we need to add the capacitor. This one is 10 microfarads, 16 volts. We need to add the resistor. This is purely for the LED to indicate that we have power and the LED. So not a lot of components. Uh, we have 470 ohms for the resistor. I'll place them all. We have the three millimeter LED with the long lead on the positive side. And also the capacitor with its negative side on the right, which is the ground. Okay, so let's bend the legs outward and I'll first tack one of the legs of each component. Now let's see with the proper alignment. Okay, the LED looks good, the resistor looks good. The capacitor looks good. Now let's solder them firmly, firmly in place. So now in theory, we should have the programmer as complete LED. Now let's connect it here and to the Arduino and we can start with the first test. I have an AT Tiny here which has not been programmed so far and I'll place it with pin one facing the top. Lock it in place and I'll now try to connect it to the computer and flash the probably just the blink program and we'll see if it works. I have the microcontroller connected. The 
Uno is currently running the Arduino as ISP sketch. And here on the screen, I've opened the Blink, the basic Blink example, and I've updated the LED built-in to be with pin two, because on the 8085, we don't have that variable being preset. So we can choose whatever pin we want. I chose pin two and I just replaced it everywhere. So to upload, I've choose the board as 80 tiny 85. And if you don't have them in your Arduino, I'll have links down below where you can download the board definitions. And here we're gonna choose that we have an 85. We choose that the internal clock is at eight megahertz. And here is the Arduino Uno, which is connected at COM8 and the programmer will be Arduino as ISP. So what's left next is to hit upload. And let's see if this will go as we hope. Currently the sketch is compiling and it seems that everything went as it should. The AT Tiny is hopefully now programmed. And now let's try and build a circuit where we can try it out and see if we actually have the blink on it. And then we'll try to program multiple at once. Okay, so here I have the test setup. I have five volts coming in from my lab bench power supply and it goes to pin uh, five. Uh, actually to pin eight on the 80 tiny which is the vcc and i'm inputting five volts here on pin four it's the ground and pin two uh, which is an arduino pin two is equivalent to pin seven on the ic i have a resistor that goes to the led and then the led is connected to ground as you can see this already blinks but there we have something wrong uh, with the setup, if you spot here, the blink is running, but it's running at a uh, much slower speed. And that's because out of the box, 80 tiny 85 is programmed to use the internal one megahertz clock. And we compiled the code for uh, running at eight megahertz. So in order to fix that, we'll need to uh, remove the IC from here, return it back to the programmer, which I'm gonna do right now. So I'll take it from here. I'll pop it back to the programmer, secure it, and back to the Arduino code. I'm gonna choose to burn the bootloader. Okay, that seems to have worked as expected. Now let's see if we have any difference in our test circuit. Okay, currently nothing happens. Let's try to flash the chip one more time after burning the bootloader because that might erase the program. Okay. Um, the uploading is finished and even on the programmer, I'm not sure if you can see that, but the built-in LED on the Uno flashes with a frequency of one hertz, actually one once every second, that which means that this is now controlling that because that's connected to pin 13 where that LED is on. If I pop it from here, I'll place it back in the test circuit. Let me connect that. And you can see that it's now flashing once every second. Now with that done, we know that the programmer works at least with a single IC. Now let's pop in two more and let's see what happens. Okay, so I have two more 80 tinies, which I've never used before. So I'm going to pop this one in as well. Let's turn it off. I can show you if I pop any of this inside here. 
Not sure what's gonna happen. So they're not doing anything. And now let's add the two of them. I'll add this one as the first one, making sure that pin one is close to the handle. And then I'll add the second one. So we'll try this example with two. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna burn the bootloader because they're currently running at one megahertz. Okay, that seems to have worked. And now let's upload the code. It's currently compiling the same sketch as we had on this one. And that seems to have worked. Let's pop them off and try to see. So I'll keep this one separate. And that is working. Awesome. Now let's try this one. And that one is working as well. So we have a functioning programmer that can program multiple ATtinys at the same time. Now for the next uh, example, I'll pop this one from here. So all of the three ATtinys I have here are currently running the same code. I'll pop all three of them inside the programmer and lock all of them in. So currently I'm gonna change the delay to be 500. And basically this should make them all work at two Hertz. Let's upload the program now. It's compiling, erasing the chips, writing, Okay, everything seems to have worked as expected. Now let's pop them off and I don't know, let's try any of them. Awesome, as you can see now, the LED flashes twice as fast as before. And this should be the case with all three of the chips. Perfect. Let's try the third one. And it also works. And with that, I'm really happy on how this programmer turned out. The PCB looks awesome. Thanks again, PCB Way, for sponsoring the video and for also making these boards flawless. I'll have links to the Gerber files and as well, and you can order this board from PCBWay directly. I'll have links down in the video description where you can download the files and directly order them. A pack of 10 will only cost you $5. So feel free to build your own programmers. And if you like this video, I'm sure that you're gonna like this one where I build an automatic vacuum switch with an 80 tiny. So be sure to check that out. Thank you for watching.